coming at you from the OLR Podcast Studio. Eh, it's really more of a basement. Coming to you from the OLR Basement Studio. But it's still a podcast. Coming to you from the Podcast Basement Studio. Yeah, but you still need to say OLR. Coming to you from the OLR Podcast Basement Studio. Oh, that's way too many words. Coming at you. That's not enough. You still need to say OLR. Let's just start. It's OLR. Okay. And welcome to tonight's One Lane Road Podcast with Lucas and DK. Hi, everybody. Hopefully we got... Hopefully, not hopefully. Hopefully we got some new listeners out here tonight. We don't do a lot of wrestling-related shows. No. We, we talk a lot of wrestling on our shows. We don't more, have... A, more than what you'd imagine. Mm-hmm. I love it, Lucas. You can go either way with it. You can go either way with it. So uh, we talk a lot about wrestling, but we don't have a lot of wrestling-related guests. And tonight we're going to have... Here's the thing. This guest tonight would be directly related to the time of wrestling in which I watched. Yeah. This, we've had two, this will be two of our guests, two, two wrestling guests, both from the time that I actually paid attention to wrestling. Yeah, we're, we're both guys in our late 30s, so the, we, we hit both wrestling booms with the 80s and early 90s, and also the, the late 90s, early 2000s boom, so we were, we were all up in that. And, uh, I was going to disagree with you about the late 30s. Uh, comment and say that I'm in my mid 30s, but in like you know less than two weeks, I will be in my late yeah, 30s. You're on the other side of that midway point at you know 37 and 36 here, so you're old as old as hell, also. Oh my God. So, um, yeah, so but you you say that like I don't Lucas always gives me a hard time about talking wrestling on this show, but mm-hmm. but once again, I'm bringing on guests from that era, right? I'm not bringing on Dolph Ziggler, that's right? What, that's always my reference, like Seth, I'm not bringing on Seth Rollins. I don't watch wrestling as now much Seth, currently. Seth, it don't matter. It yeah. don't, it's, it, he's completely irrelevant to what we're about to say. You just need to know he's a guy in the uh-huh. modern era that we're not trying to talk about right. or interview. We're talking about guys that we grew up on mm-hmm. and, and that, that matter to the nostalgia that you hate. So, <laughs> <laughs> but it's a big guess. So Georgia Smith. Yeah. Um, daughter, daughter, daughter. Daughter of the British Bulldog, David Boy Smith. Yeah, of course. she's um, Her brother, Harry, also... Um, has wrestled some, I mean, for the last decade or more. Um, mm-hmm. We'll talk to her about that. And, and of course, her lineage in the, uh, the historic Hart family, you know, her Bret Hart, Owen Hart, Jim Anvil, Nine Hart, all being her uncles. And uh, Natalia, current WWE diva uh, or personality. Um, also, you know, she, uh, she's on the roster for several years now. So, so you know, one of the most uh, famous wrestling families out there. So she's uh, – talk to Georgia. She's um, – Chief Executive Officer at uh, British, British Bulldog Companies, and she's taking over, basically keeping the legacy of, of Davy Boy alive. And so we got several things going on for her tonight to talk about. So, well, good. Well, let's give her a call. See what she's doing. Joining us tonight for the show, like we said, Georgia Smith, um, daughter of British Bulldog Davy Boy Smith. Um, thank you for joining us tonight, Georgia. Oh well, thank you. No, no problem. So you're coming to us from Tampa. Is that right? Is that right? Yeah, yeah, Tampa, Florida. It's a lot. Yeah, sunny. It's beautiful out right now. Yeah, why don't you rub in our faces? We're coming down. Looks, it sounds like Seattle out here. It's pouring rain in Tennessee <laughs> for three days now. Oh my God! <laughs> yeah, it feels like I need some rain here, but um, yeah, it's beautiful. It's yeah. a great day to have St. Patrick's Day and a stimulus check. <laughs> <laughs> Are you drinking any green beer tonight? Uh, yeah, I'm actually uh, after the phone call. I'm going to get some uh, green beer before. Uh, my next call after that. So. Okay. Well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we won't keep you long, man. We'll hit hit some high spots and um, just you know, tell our listeners you are the chief executive officer at British Bulldog Companies. Um, of course, you, you do your own thing. You like you, like your website says you uh, specialize in voiceovers and voice animation and do a little acting and all that. And then, um, so on top of that, I mean, you know your your father. Le- legendary in the pro-, pro wrestling scene he, he passed away you know 19 years ago and you're doing a great yeah. job it's, it's just a it's real inspiring to see what you're doing as far as keeping you know all of his accounts and keeping his legacy alive and wh- where did that come from like when did you start thinking that up that you wanted to do something like that for him well it started um a couple of years ago hold on just give me one second i'm just gonna go over here i'll meet you guys 
Yeah, so it started um, a couple of, well, actually not a couple of years ago. It started about a year ago. Um, it started in January of uh, 2019. I uh, just felt like my dad didn't really have a platform on uh, social media. I knew I saw some tribute pages for him. And, you know, I was going through some things in uh, my personal life. And I don't know, I just came up with the, the, the idea in the new year of January. I was like, you know, maybe I should start a page for my dad, like just something for fans to, you know, share content and for me to share things about my dad. And uh, I wasn't expecting anything from it. And I follow Bruce Lee and I follow Shannon Lee on social media. And I really liked what she was doing when she was, you know, posting things about her dad and keeping his legacy alive. And, you know, Bruce Lee's been gone since the early 70s. And, you know, he is just still so popular today. And um, you see how much. Uh, love she has for him and she's just always coming up with new ideas and that just kind of inspired me to to go with it and um, you know I just every day I post something on my dad as you guys can see and um, it's a labor of love for me and um, it's therapeutic you know every day I I I see him in some capacity and I'm also I'm learning a lot in the uh, business world and the business mindset you know I'm I'm the face like you said I am the the head of the of the British Bulldog brand, and I'm also his daughter. So I'm I'm learning new things all the time about my dad when I'm put, putting stuff out there and fans showing me things. And um, you know, at my dad, that's why he's a legend. He's an icon, and uh, he's never going to be forgotten about because of uh, you know all of us keeping his legacy alive. You know, for, from that perspective, I would much rather see a fan page ran by the actual child. Or a family member of, of you know the celebrity because you know I mean not not to not to poke fun but sometimes those fan pages can get a tad bit creepy you know a yeah, little bit can, yeah yeah so yeah definitely much better for uh, for you to run it and you know one thing I realized you know because we we've watched your brother throughout the years but man you are a spitting image of Davy Boy Smith like it's <laughs> unbelievable oh wow thank you yeah <laughs> I, I, people say that to me you know. Harry does look like him, but um, there is a. I think uh, I I favor uh, Davy more in the uh, in the uh, appearance. Definitely, I think Harry is. He's getting older. He's starting to look like you know my dad when my dad was reaching forty. But I look uh, like my dad back in ninety two. You yeah. know when he had the braids and the curly hair. You know it's crazy. I look like more younger Davy. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. The the braids and maybe Harry looks like him with the new heart foundation in the late nineties. Yeah. You know that's kind of it's a good analogy. The the, yeah, the, yeah. The picture you posted. I don't know if it was a fan account or who sent it to you, but it was like it was half your face, half Davy's put together that you had posted. That was uh, that was really neat and. Oh yeah, his new doll or sorry, wrestling figure that came out. Um, yeah, there was a side by side, and it was like, whoa, you don't need more of you for that one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, you know, you know, the show Young Rock is you know coming out with the with Dwayne Johnson producing his uh, his show about his life, and I would have to think I don't know if you've checked it out or not, but um, that would have to resonate with you a little bit as far as you growing up in the in the wrestling business and seeing all these guys around your home all the time. Yeah, yeah, uh, you know, growing up, like, I had a Sherry Martell and, you know, Legion of Doom, um, like, they were over at my house, or more so Hawk was, um, you know, Warlord, he, he, him and my dad were friends, Ultimate Warrior and my dad were friends, um, Macho Man, uh, you know, Randy Savage and my dad were friends, Brutus Beefcake, my mom and dad used to go on Hulk Hogan's boat, and, yeah, we were all in the Tampa community, and, um, you know, the, in my earliest years, you know, like when I was born, when I was about, you know, probably about eight years old, they were um, a, a big part of my life. So, yeah, it's a, it's crazy looking back on it now and looking at pictures and, um, you know, they were just like family to us. And, yeah, speaking of young rock, like I would love to, to someday somehow do a, um, a series or a film um, about my dad and his life. Sure, I think that would be a, a big hit. Um, Young Rock is pretty corny. I mean, I love everything The Rock does, but I, and I know he's poking fun and being lighthearted, but it's been a little bit of a corny show uh, overall, I thought, but it, it's, it's still cool to look back at. Um, and that's not even mentioned, like, you know, my dad's friends were like loggers and farmers and factory workers, and you're just casually hanging out with the macho man. And, yeah, uh, you yeah, know, that's just, pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, and not to mention your, your family lineage. I mean, you're talking about all these big names, then you – 
then at the family reunions you've got you know Brett and Owen and, and Anvil and all that. It's just what, what age I guess was it that you're like, all right, you know, um, Bethany in my in my homeroom class doesn't have the same lifestyle that I have. Yeah, I think I was about or like re, are you asking like what what age did I realize this is like my family is a bit different. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Um, I was probably, I mean, I, I can't really, like, pinpoint, you know, there, that was what I was brought up with. I mean, that's all I knew. Um, but I knew my dad, you know, he wasn't, like, a, the, like a, a, a normal dad that, like, you know, my, my schoolmates or my neighbor's dads had in my early years. And, you know, I noticed my dad was always gone. And, you know, he, he looked like, um, you know, like a, like a G.I. Joe, like a legit wrestling doll. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he was very tanned and had the braids and he was uh, dressed differently. And, um, you know, he wasn't, as I mentioned, the upcoming documentary, he, he wasn't like a Fred Flintstone or a George Jetson, you know, with briefcase, you know, suit and tie, reading the paper, heading off for work. Like my dad was, uh, um, you know, always on the go traveling, you know, worldwide for uh, the WWF at the time. And, um, you know, brought, br- go- growing up, I always just saw him on TV, you know, and my, that's why I would always refer to my dad as Davey, because on TV he was Davey, and then my mom would re- call him Davey. Um, so he wasn't dad, and um, that, that, was, that was another thing. And yeah. I think, um, you know, everywhere we went with him, he would get stopped and, and swarmed with people. But, I mean, he, he, he had no problem with it. It was just like, that was just kind of like an everyday normal occurrence. So it wasn't ever like, oh, you know, why is this happening now? It was just, that was just the way it was. That was the way of life. And um, I remember going to Disney World with him when I was about four years old. And the people that were dressed up as uh, Mickey and uh, Goofy and Donald Duck and the Chipmunks, um, they were, they uh, brought their notepads and markers for my dad to sign. Wow. And fans were coming up to my dad for my dad to sign stuff for them. And I was like, wow, you know, at Disney World pretty big deal at four years old when mickey mouse is asking my dad for an autograph <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny most dads had suits and ties and briefcase your dad had zubaz pants and fanny packs <laughs> i was gonna say that dude you read my mind zubaz pants fanny pack bodybuilding shirt yeah exactly <laughs> yeah um so i guess you know we, we, we got to talk about like, like i said i want to keep it brief and just hit the, hit the high points but you know everybody that commented everybody basically came back to that summer slam 92 match and of course, you would have been young when it happened, but I know you've seen it mm-hmm. a thousand times since then. But just talk about the the importance of that moment. I mean, being you know, I think that's the fourth largest still to this date pay per view in WWE history, and at at Wembley Stadium, eighty thousand people. Where at the time, you know, the world title match always went on last, and they're yeah, they're Davey and Bret Hart with the uh, Intercontinental Title match, and. Well, your mother got some serious screen time. You know, I watched, I rewatched that match last night just about to be fresh on it. First time I'd probably watched it in 25 years. And just the importance of it. I mean, you're, and they, they just really sold the moment of your mother being torn between her brother and husband. It was, it was uh, definitely some early 90s stuff for you. But, man, what a, yeah. what a huge match, though. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm quite fortunate that, you know, I, I, was, I was there live to see it. And, you know, I was uh, there for the, the build up of it. And, you know, I didn't really understand like why they were fighting or what was going on, but you know, it was a, a believable story. And, um, uh, yeah, I, I think that was my earliest wrestling memory was that. And, uh, the WrestleMania seven in, uh, California, those two, like, those are my two earliest memories. And, you know, that match, the SummerSlam 1992, it was just such a, a masterpiece. And it's, you know, my dad and Brett, they, they made history because it's never happened before and it's never happened again. And, you know, um, a little before my dad performed there, uh, Freddie Mercury, a tribute concert, my dad and my mom actually attended there and it sold out at Wembley. Mm. But that concert didn't sell out um, as fast as uh, SummerSlam 1992. And there's actual written proof that my dad and, and, and Brett, that match, that, that event, it uh, outsold Michael Jackson and Madonna and um their previous Dang. tours wow. so it's just it's no joke like you know it's it's uh it was history and you know you can re-watch that match and it's just such a good match and so believable and they brought the best out of each other and and it's just like you said it's just like 90s gold like you look at uh davy's gear and you look at brett's gear like when you're a fan you know even sitting where harry and i were sitting in the royal box seat where the the queen sat like 
where everything looked miniature because we were so far up, you know, but you knew who was who, you knew who was the British Bulldog and who was Bret Hart. And, um, you know, we're just, it just never happened again. And um, what made it so special for, for me and for my dad and my, my, my family is that, um, you know, it happened in England and my dad, uh, or sorry, Great Britain, it happened there in my dad's uh, country. And he, he was, uh, was, he won, he won in his country, which is, uh, which was amazing. And you see the crowd's reaction. Oh, they were, and they were wild. Was like, it was, it was crazy. Yeah. It was like the biggest, uh, pop and, and pro wrestling ever. Yeah. <laughs> and it, yeah, it's that, and I think that's why it, it means so much to, to my family and, and it meant so much to Davey. And I know he, he would pay, um, like as a, as an outsider, he, my dad would pay to watch that match. And he has said that, like, if he could watch any, any sporting event, he would watch that match and pay whatever to see it. And yeah, it just really put my dad on the map. And, you know, prior to that, he was with dynamite and, you know, dynamite said like, you're not going to make it without me. You're not going to go anywhere. You're not going to be anywhere without me. And it's like, my dad did it. Yeah. I'm, I'm really glad that guy never has came off as bitter. Uh, one bit. Very. Very <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that match was voted uh, Pro Wrestling Illustrated Match of the Year for 1992. And, you know, yeah. t- 29 years ago, uh, 29 years, and it's still considered the greatest SummerSlam main event and, you know, moment in history. And it's just, it's remarkable. Yeah. And it's been, it's talked about more now than ever. And, you know, I remember watching that match in 2002 with my dad. And, you know, it was a, it was a, a great match then, but it's just becoming like, over the time, like more, more and more of a classic and people were always referring to it. And, uh, yeah, I just, I wish my age now I could go back and and see it. So yeah. And with these times that we're in, I don't know if we'll ever see, you know, big audiences like that in the foreseeable future. So, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just grateful and lucky that, um, we, 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 we can all go back and watch it on uh, YouTube or Fib network. Yeah, that's where I watched like ten thirty last night. <laughs> Just to, I can, I hadn't watched, I hadn't watched it in years. So, but um, yeah, yeah, and uh, the opposite spectrum of that. And I don't want to touch on it too long, but you know, so I'm a Shawn Michaels fan. I, I always was, even as a kid. I love Shawn Michaels, and he, he was really a thorn in your family side for for years on yeah. on camera and off camera. And so I wondered briefly, just you know, they they did a teased um, storyline with your mother and Shawn in '96. Was she comfortable being in that role? You know, because '96 we were still in a little bit in the gray area about wrestling being staged and yeah, everything. You know, how did did it affect you guys as a family? I mean, I know it sounds like a silly question, but you know, no, no, because um, you know, when my mom and dad were home, that's that's who I knew and what I knew, and you know, Shawn Michaels, you know, he used to give my mom like teddy bears, things to give to me uh, when they were on the road. She'd be like, oh, Shawn. Because Sean, like, loved me. I was, like, he kind of looked at me like I, like if he could have a daughter, he would want me to be like that. Um, so, yeah, growing up, uh, I actually had, like, the biggest crush on Shawn Michaels, too. I was like, you know, he's hot. You know, as, like, every other girl did back in the 90s. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, like, I, I really, I, yeah, yeah, exactly. I really liked uh, Sean, and I knew, you know, how he was to me in person and how I saw how he was to my dad and how he was to my mom that's the Sean I knew. So when I saw it all on TV, I was like, oh, okay, this is like, this is a, a proper episode of <laughs> theatrics here. Yeah. Um, but like, yeah, no, it didn't really uh, affect us at all. And my mom, um, she, she loved being a part of it and, and traveling and, um, you know, Harry enough, Harry and I were old enough that, you know, we could have like our aunt watch us and, uh, you know, she was, safe with my dad and um she she really embraced being on on camera and um yeah she liked it so it didn't didn't bother us at all sure a, a year later sean would come back in the picture and this is where you know you always hear about the backstage politics of of those guys and in, in the click at the time and it was terrible really i mean you, you it's all a work you're right it's all scripted but when when you're in um england again for Davy versus Sean and the place is sold out and the place is nuts for one night only and the wrong person won and I mean, even in a scripted environment there's no way that that's supposed to have happened right and it was just uh no <laughs> that was no. A, that was um, not good no and 
Um, you know, my dad was a, a, a professional about it. He could have made a really big deal about it. And then like, you know, this is my home country and I'm not having this happen. And, uh, stomped his dreams and had a meltdown about it, but he didn't, he was just like, all right. And if I recall, they, they changed things last minute. And, um, they, I, they originally wanted like a page three or page four model or whatever in England to walk my dad down to the ring at that time in England. And my mom was like, well, why, why, like, why can't I do it? And they were kind of like, eh. and even Shawn Michaels was like, I don't understand why Diana's not doing it. And then my mom was like, no, like, if you're going to have anybody, then, you know, have baby sister Tracy do it. You know, she's lived here. And like, so that's how that happened. But just the whole like rhyme and reason for everything going on, then it was like, why is this happening? Like, why? Like, this doesn't make any sense. No. Um, but yeah, it's just that my dad just kind of rolled with the, the punches with it and was like, whatever. And, you know, at that time he was, you know, heading to WCW with Brett. So he was like, all right whatever this is what you're gonna do to me cool um yeah. but you know uh things were different then and um i don't know uh i i wasn't i i don't really go back and uh watch that match or reflect on it too much because um you know as we all were uh not too impressed with it in the outcome but yeah. um yeah. Yeah. Sean's my favorite wrestler of all time, and I can even look at it going, "God, that was tacky." Even in a, even in a, a scripted world of pro wrestling, that is that's tacky. The way that it ended, it was great heat on them at the end, but goodness gracious, it was it just it was it yeah. was it was bad. Well, uh, so anyway, like I said, you, he spent a couple years there in WCW, came back to WWE, and um, was it ninety nine, two thousand? Blue jeans, baby boy. That was a that was a time, <laughs> you know, uh, just a different look. You know. Always saw him with his trunks on. And he came coming back with the blue jeans, and uh, of course he had his struggles there for a couple years. Um, wh- what about that last run with Vince? Did did he uh, did he come away with? You think? Well, what's that? What kind? What did you think of his last run? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, he was. Um, it was kind of a. Uh, it was bittersweet because you know he was excited to go back. And, you know, he was originally going back with, um, because Owen was the one that set everything up. Sure. So that was the plan. And then, you know, like two weeks after his deal was signed and, you know, Owen and him talked to Vince, Owen passed away. And then, um, you know, that, that, that whole situation. And my dad, you know, he had a family to feed and he had to provide for his family and he went back to work and... You know, that caused a lot of, uh, I mean, a lot of people had problems with it. Um, but, you know, my dad had to do what he had to do. And, you know, I, I stand by what my dad did. And he, he didn't uh, pull, play the blame game or point fingers or anything. It was it was a tragic accident. And, um, yeah, so. Um, but, yeah, he, he, he knew that that was going to be his last run. He knew that. Um, he, he was gonna. I think his contract was uh was four years that he was going to be there. Um, the other one, two, three, yeah, sorry, it was a five year contract, I believe. He was gonna be there for, and uh, he just wanted to to just kind of um, not not uh, take things easier, but he just kind of wanted to because he was reaching, you know, getting into his, getting into forty, sure. and just wanted to kind of you know. Um, do what he could, and uh, and if I recall, he was home a little more than uh, previous years. Um, so yeah, he he kind of was like, all right, well, this is it, and just make the most of it. And uh, this, yeah, and he wanted to uh, create a wrestling school, and um, he wanted to open up a gym. He wanted to get into film, and there was a uh, the other things he wanted to explore, and he wanted to do um, more wrestling in England and. Um, do events and appearances. Uh, yeah, but, uh, you know, was he happy with everything? I mean, I I don't know. I know he, he personally didn't find the jeans too comfortable to wrestle in, but he, he knew that he was um, approaching a new era, and it was the attitude um, or the aggression or whatever era, sure. and they wanted him to be um, established as, like, a badass, a heel. And that's that's the look that was popular at the time, and they he approved it, and you know he he uh, he was he was fine with it. Um, but yeah, he 
he was excited to go back and he my dad wrestling was all he knew and all he loved and um so yeah he he was happy and he uh always kept a, a decent relationship with the uh, Vince McMahon and um you know he loved to travel and yeah good I, yeah I never knew the story on the jeans I'd I, I... That's, that was new. I just I knew it. I remembered it, but I never knew the reasoning. But um, so you know, when he did pass away, we don't want to you know we don't want to damper the mood or anything. But you know, he got to wrestle with Harry before that, and I, yeah. that's, that's something I didn't remember. I remembered it once I once I saw the research, but so that that was just a couple of weeks, I guess, before he passed away. I mean, that was it has to be a, a memory Harry will always have. Yeah, exactly. And like you know, none of us knew that was going to be the last match sure. like my dad were matches my dad would ever have so it's just crazy how that all happened um but you know i know harry like you said it's just something that we'll never forget and um yeah it was you know harry was uh coming into his own with wrestling and was you know still quite shy and um you know learning and you know it's pretty cool when you can be side by side with your dad and um you know if your dad's the british bulldogs and that's the a major plus, a major win. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, you know, we, we cover that in my dad's upcoming documentary and, um, you know, my dad looks great in it. And, um, you know, I know, um, and I feel and believe that when Harry's wrestling uh, today, you know, my dad is, uh, there in some capacity and proud. So, yeah. Yeah. And you, you keep me, uh, mentioning the documentary. That's the last two things we want to talk, uh, to hit on here. Uh, first, the Hall of Fame, though. Um, of course, Davey was finally, after all these years, uh, elected to the 2020 WWE Hall of Fame. Of course, with COVID, that got pushed out. You will be celebrating this WrestleMania weekend uh, next month in Tampa. Um, yep. So what's, what's the latest you re- you're being told on that, as far as the ceremony and all that? Um, well, uh, it will be Harry and my mom and myself that will be uh, in attendance representing, uh, honoring my dad. And, you know, like you said, this was supposed to happen last year. And unfortunately, due to COVID, it's been um, pushed to, to this year. But, um, you know, I think this is going to be, or this is, the anticipated Hall of Fame um, because people have been waiting for it for so long. And now they've had to wait even more for this to happen. And, um, you know, a lot of things have happened with my dad's brand from since, you know, that he's been inducted in 2020 to now. That's all so you. So I feel like this. Yeah. Th- well, thank you. Thank you very much. And um, I think uh, it's just going to make it even more special. And, um, you know, I, I, I think Davey's going to he's going to steal the show. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> in my opinion. What a class, too. It's a it's a hell of a class. <laughs> yeah. And he deserves all the recognition and uh, credit. And, um, yeah, it's uh, it's just uh, I'm just really happy for him and for my family. But yeah, Dave, um, Davey's one of those those characters that you wish fans could be in attendance for. You know, just just uh, mm-hmm, just for mm-hmm. the reaction and the fan because it's so overdue, right? I mean, you know, so many years ago he should have went in. Um, yeah, yeah, just yeah. I'm knowing. disappointed that there's no fans and you know that, but yeah. Um, and the documentary, so the the WWE's on their network doing the Icons uh, series. The Yokozuna one was the first to appear, and it's uh, received a lot of great praise. Um, Tell us just a little, you know, what can we expect with that documentary? Um, yeah, so um, I believe my dad's is going to be one of the last episodes. I think it's like the second last or the last one. And we just pretty much cover, you know, I, I talk about the, the, the dad I had and the, the person I knew and, you know, uh, his social media and everything that, that gets touched on a lot. And, you know, Harry wrestling as Davey Boy Smith Jr. and, him going into the Hall of Fame and, you know, Davey's last days and, um, you know, Davey's upbringing. And you're just going to see a lot of things and hear a lot of stuff from Harry and I that nobody's ever heard before and different stories and, um, you know, just what an amazing human being we had here and how much we, we all miss him and how much of an impact he's uh, affected on us today um, and with fans. You know, my dad still impacts uh, fans today and new fans and fans that you know came about when after he died that are getting into wrestling and we we talk about that and uh how why his legacy is uh continuing and how he was the biggest star to come out of uh england and um 
you know, how NXT UK, you know, I don't believe it would be possible if it wasn't for, for my dad and uh, the, the impact he's had. And, <clears throat> yeah, an icon, legend, um, and just kind of celebrating him and just, you know, just telling uh, his real, real life story. And, um, you know, I've always wanted to, to do a documentary on him. I wasn't sure if it was going to be with the WWE or if it was going to be an outside project. And I have been approached uh, for an outside project. Uh, my dad was like British pop culture, which um, uh, details will be coming soon about that. But uh, yeah, this is, uh, it's, again, like my grandfather in England, he, he talks in it. And my d- grandfather from England, I think the last time we saw him on TV was the one night only when he was in the front row. And then WWE talked to him back in 1991 at his, my grandparents' house. So this is, you know, um, probably the, the last time you'll, you'll see my granddad because he's, he's uh, quite old now. And, sure. you know, it was quite admirable. And uh, I commend WWE because they, they made this all happen and during COVID. You know, with, with all the restrictions and everything, we all came together and we made this happen for Davey. And, yeah. you know, my, as I mentioned, my grandfather's not doing very well. My aunt got COVID and my dad's brother died all at the same time, like all in the like December when and uh things kept closing down in England and like they weren't allowed to I mean still everything's closed down but they couldn't film they couldn't so I was like you know it's gonna be I'm be disappointed if we can't hear my granddad and can't hear my aunt talk and they made it happen you know they they, they, they can be criticized and, they can be criticized yeah. for their a lot of their politics there but man they they really do knock the those documentaries out of the park and everything they, they do, do production wise they do a ma- like masterpieces, and you know I really enjoyed uh, Kieran, who's making this one as well. He made Heart and Soul that uh, mm-hmm. about my family, and now he's doing this episode. You know I don't know how they're going to condense all the people and all the interviews and all the stories and all the content in an hour, an hour and a half. But I mean I'm just I'm very uh, you know I can't wait to see what the final package you know uh, is going to look like. So to to wrap it up here, we're gonna get some uh, just some rapid fire. We had some listener questions that were that wanted to put out there, just real quick for you, and you can answer them just to yeah, just quick. And uh, so William Nichols, not not really a question as much as just said, I loved uh, Davy's time um, with the um, the New Heart Foundation, also the British Bulldogs. But he said um, doesn't get a lot of attention, but I loved his WCW matches with Big Van Vader, and um, me too. And ask whether his SummerSlam '92 was uh, Davy's pinnacle. You think? Yes, yes. My dad was uh, on top of the world. The best time of his life was uh, Summer Sum- SummerSlam '1992. I think that maybe <laughs> is up there with uh, Harry's and my birth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, our friend Don has a corny question and a real question. He says, "How does a Canadian mom and a British dad name their daughter Georgia?" My uh, aunt, my aunt, uh, my aunt, uh, uh, cousin Teddy Hart, uh, his mom is named Georgia. So uh, yep. my mom's sister is uh, Georgia. She was Georgia Hart. Um, you know, she was the Smith, Bruce, Keith, Wayne, Dean, Ellie, Georgia, seventh out of the 12 kids. And her name was Georgia. And Georgia is a, is a Greek name. And my grandmother was uh, Greek. There you so go. Uh, my mom named her, uh, you know, George and Georgia. You know, there's the male, sure. female version. And I think that means farmer, or f- a female farmer in Greek. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's where I, my mom named me after her. Yeah, so. he, he sent in a list of questions, and I, I laughed at the last one. He goes, no, that's a stupid-ass question. Don't ask that question. And I was like, no, nah, I will. I'm sure she'll find it a little <laughs> funny at least. But uh, And then he asked about your brother, and I, you know, I didn't realize this also, that he, he, he had asked whether we would see him on television soon. And he, is he has he just re-signed with WWE, is that correct? No, he hasn't re-signed with WWE. So he that's just a rumor. He is a, that is a rumor. He is okay. a free agent um, as we speak. So, okay. Um, yeah. So that leads to my next question from Pete Griffin says, why is Georgia not involved in pro wrestling herself? She has a a great look. Well, thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, uh, Why I didn't get into wrestling. uh, My, my dad uh, wouldn't have been too impressed if I did. I mean, he just, he was just brought up, um, you know, we, it was just a different era and a different time when he was in wrestling and women didn't really um, have, it wasn't, you know, back when I was in my early teens, you know, it was bras and bra and panties matches, and um, you know that that was the <laughs> what was going on. So I'm, I, I'm sure if I were to have said to my dad, "This is what I want to do," he wouldn't have been too happy about it. Where you know, 
today you've got, you know, Charlotte Flair, you've got Sasha Banks, Bianca Belair, my cousin Natty, um, that, you know, are, are uh, athletes and, you know, they, they work their asses off and they're, they're really good at what they do and they're strong, confident uh, wrestlers, female wrestlers, even. Um, but, you know, maybe, maybe if I had those influences back then, it may have been a different story, but I also just never took any interest in it. It was, uh, you know, Harry was, uh, his passion was always wrestling and, um, he was, uh, encouraged. I mean, cause that's what he wanted to do. So my, my family, they, you know, he trained with my uncles and, um, my dad tried to, to help him and train him when he could, when he was home and. That was like the common commonality Harry and my dad had. Um, so, yeah, it was just kind of like that was Harry's thing, and then I, I had my own thing. And um, uh, so, yeah, that's that's why I'm not in wrestling. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Brandon Cooper says he is willing to change his last name and move to Florida from Cookville, Tennessee, if you were, uh, will accept his engagement today. <laughs> The engagement. So he wants to get married. Uh, you know, yes, he's pretty. He's pretty bitter. He's not here interviewing you tonight. He's. Uh, he said. Oh man. He came to my desk. Wow. It's a coworker, and he came over to my desk, and they said, "Well, I want you to know that I love Georgia Smith, and she is beautiful, and I will. I am willing to change my last name and move to Tampa, Florida." <laughs> well, well, I, I, that's that's really, uh, I, wow. I'm I'm very very flattered. That's very nice of them. Hey, if they want to get me a duplicate Hall of Fame ring, that would be great. <laughs> there you go, Brandon. Uh, there you go. Pony up, son. <laughs> get her a ring. Um. So the last last two questions. Um. Favorite non bulldog match from summer? Like favorite non SummerSlam bulldog match. Favorite non SummerSlam bulldog match, and as somebody mentioned before, I really like um my dad's matches that he had in uh, WCW and, you know, as I'm doing my dad's stuff, um, I'm watching, you know, going back into the, the archives and looking at past matches and, um, like going back to Halloween Havoc, there was a match that he had with, uh, uh William Regal or Stephen Regal that he was called at the time mm-hmm. that, uh, I really liked. And, you know, as you see my dad for his size, he's doing like, um, back handsprings and dip ups and was just moved so good. And he looked so good. And William Regal was just like, it played the bad guy so good and you've got like, you know, you've got your, your British hero and then the bad British guy. And I just really enjoyed those matches and also the matches he had with Vader. And, uh, I, I like those a lot. Uh, I, I look back at his, in the matches that he had with the rock. I just think like they just, just, and they're, they're, they're entertaining and they're just kind of like funny as well. Um, it's just, they, they brought out like the, I don't know. Um, but it was just, I think The Rock brought out a, a, a side of my dad that I, I kind of uh, was amused with. So, yeah, I'm going to go with those. Sure. And the last one. Um, we know Owen was a big river, um, and everybody knows the, the stories of Owen. Um, t- but D- Davey also had a light side. Um, has anybody communicated to you any s- stories that you can share with us of them pulling pranks on people? Or any yeah, personal well, stories? Actually- yeah, actually on my dad's Instagram, if you go way back, um, I actually have um, a video clip of my dad and Owen doing pranks. Like when they were at, like, the ho- I think they're in Boston at a hotel room and they're calling different wrestlers hotel rooms and they're just calling random rooms and they're trying to really push selling a pizza to uh, these people. And they're like, oh no, sir, we've already eaten. And they're like, no, you know, my, my, uh, um, um, uh, what is it? My tips, they were there. They, their commission, my commission relies on this. You, you have to have this pizza and you know, you, well, okay. Well, if you can't have it tonight, you can bring it on the plane with you tomorrow. You know, pizza is nutritious, delicious. You can have it hot, cold. And they're like, no, we just want to go to bed. And they're like, ma'am, you listen to me. You're going to get And like, they're getting really pushy. Um, but if, if you can't find it on my Instagram, cause I did post it a long time ago. If you YouTube bridge bulldog, Owen Hart, Frank, I think it will come up. Okay. We'll check that out. We'll check it out. Um, numerous stories over the years. Just stuff people love hearing that kind of stuff. Just kind of back backstage. Uh, you know, silly stuff like that. You know, where you can catch guys out of character. So, um, but hey, we uh, we appreciate you. We don't want to keep you any longer. We we know you got green beer to drink, and uh, we, I certainly <laughs> don't want to hold you back from that. But um, plug. Go ahead and plug anything that you want. Go ahead and do your social media plugs, and that way everybody can check it yeah. out. If you guys want to follow me, my Instagram is at Georgia J Smith. 
my Twitter is uh, twitter.com backslash uh, Georgia Smith 87 or Twitter at Georgia Smith 87. My Facebook is uh, facebook.com backslash Georgia Smith 7. And of course, my dad, the most important one, he's uh, on Instagram at the British Bulldog Davy Boy Smith. Uh, catch all his news, updates, content, everything, all him there. He also has a website which is www.davyvoicesmith.com. So if, if people are listening and they want to ask a question or ask a question about Davy, there's a frequently asked uh, FAQ section on there. Um, you can see his diet. You can see his workout. Uh, any other interviews and media that I've done. So when you guys uh, are done this interview and you have a link, I will post it on there. Thank and you. during the next couple of – you're welcome. Over the next couple of weeks, I'm doing a lot of uh, media and press for the, the Hall of Fame. So I'm going to be posting all that on there. And, uh, you know, you can see bios on, uh, you know, Davey, my mom, Harry, myself. And, uh, yeah, it's just on Davey's store. Davey has a, he's got a new store. It's called Wrestle Merch Central. And you can get all sorts of uh, Davey merchandise from there. And, uh, you know, he does have a store in Pro Wrestling Tees. But on his online store, on his website, check it out. He's got new stuff coming all the time. And, um, yeah, that, that's going on. And he is on Twitter at uh, underscore Davy Boy Smith on Facebook, uh, facebook.com backslash the British Bulldog. And he has a YouTube channel. So feel free to check out his YouTube. He's got uh, matches being uploaded all the time there. It's really good. Uh, lots of uh, nice, cool gems that even I haven't seen before are updated regularly on there. So you guys can keep up with all your Davy and Bulldog stuff. All those. Wow. That's. Uh... How much screen time do you have on your phone, do you think, after looking at social media? Uh, a lot. I mean, not a lot. <laughs> if you're, hey, if you're, oh, sorry. I mean, a lot. A lot. I thought you meant, like, uh, my battery. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. If you're like me, you don't you, you don't want to know how much you're on your phone daily, probably. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's, uh, and especially, you know, um, as of recently, my phone, it's just like, I, I mean, I thought I got a lot of messages on my birthday, but... Uh, yeah. <laughs> My dad's is just like me, 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 sure. me, just buzzing constantly, which is good. It's that's, great. You know, that's a good thing. You're doing good, your job. Good thing. Yeah. And uh, yeah, feel free, guys, to look at his Instagram. He's got lots of new things coming up and new things that I wish I could disclose right now, but it's going to be announced soon. So absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. We'll be looking for that. Um, so, yeah, that's that's exciting stuff for pro wrestling fans out there, fans of the British Bulldogs. So we would like to thank you, Georgia. And uh, it's it. It rained the whole time through our interview. Now it has stopped here in Tennessee. <laughs> Just uh, yeah, it sounds like a lot clearer. Oh my uh, goodness! Jeez. So all right. Well, thank you. you and go uh, enjoy your night. We appreciate you being on with us tonight. Well, thank you so much, and have a happy St. Patrick's Day. And uh, yeah, check check me out on April sixth uh, for my dad's Hall of Fame ceremony on Peacock and at uh, the WWE Network. There you go. Absolutely. We we'll look forward to it. Once again, thank, thank you guys. Thank you. And great insight there from Georgia Smith on the legacy of her father, WWE Hall of Famer, British Bulldog, Davey Boy Smith. Fantastic interview. Not a lot of not a lot of question as to why she's able to do well with this right now. You know, she's sure. she's very personable, very easy to listen to. I mean, that's the thing, you know, yeah. she she lost her father. I mean, she was fourteen years old, you know, somewhere around that age, I think fourteen when Davey passed away. And you know I really wanted to ask her how it was it was just you know, I I didn't I didn't want to, uh, with it echoing, I didn't want to interrupt the kind of flow y'all had going. It was pretty good. And it, I was enjoying listening, but one of the things I did want to ask was, you know, being 14, I can remember back being 14, and I didn't pay a whole lot of attention to my parents exactly. at, at that point in time, you know. So I would think that she's learning a lot about her uh, dad from other people, you know. And luckily, her family, you know, her all of her family worked very closely with her dad, so she's got a direct line as to. And that's a great point, because nobody does. You Not know, at fourteen. If, what teenager does? No, if my parents passed away at fourteen, I wouldn't have wouldn't ba- know anything. Basically, about no recollection. So it is. It's a gem that you know she does get to hang out with so much of the family. Yeah, there. You know, British Bulldog man. He he um he was a star. Absolutely yeah. a star. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, back in his younger days as the, as the tag team of the British Bulldogs with a dynamite kid. Then when mm-hmm. he then when he broke off in the early nineties as a solo star. I mean, he was always relevant. He was on. Seemed like always on the cusp. There and that SummerSlam match really just proved how big of a star he could have been, and you know whatever he led, you know went to WCW and, and did his thing there. But he, he's a WWF guy or WWE guy right. to me, you know. And uh, 
And he, he, I mean, done some great things. He had, I mean, I, I never seen him have a bad match, really. Right. You know, and well, it's still WWF to me, damn it. Yeah, it is. I, yeah, you know, but uh, legally, it's not though. Well, I, I don't right. know if you know that. Right. You, you're not supposed to say that. Well, so sue me. Anyway. Well. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, that was. Uh, Georgia Smith, fantastic interview. Check her out at her on all of her social medias. You can catch us on uh, iTunes or wherever you're listening to us at. We're on a bunch of different places. But Stitcher, YouTube. So don't judge us when you look at our YouTube. It's gonna have like 16 views at most. We're not no, a YouTube. We're like, not a YouTube show. We don't post video we're there. An iTunes so show. yeah, our iTunes and Stitcher numbers is where it's at. Yep. So we don't talk. We don't have a. As we said in the, uh, the introduction, we don't do a lot of wrestling guests, but we we will. Cut up about some wrestling, about some old school wrestling from time to time. A lot of our guests, it's really you'd be surprised at how many of them talk about wrestling. Like Dustin will finally get to a point where he'll say something about wrestling, and man, it really brings it out of a lot of a lot of guests. A lot of people don't want to admit they're wrestling fans until, you know, but then they want to talk about it. You know, we've had Tennessee Titans players on here that we that I mentioned like a little quick wrestling reference, and like, oh yeah, and the they Road Warriors, yeah, you know, the yeah. Road Warriors, or whoever. Then you know, we've had country music stars on here, and they all are wrestling fans. You know? I think that's your code. You know, you say some, you give them some like something that a casual fan wouldn't know, and then they get it, and then y'all are off for the races. Yeah, it's then, pretty good. Next thing you know, we're talking about, uh, you know, some. World tape from '91. You know, we're watching global global uh, tour '91 from Australia or whatever. I don't Why know. Not? That's not even a real thing. Okay, but, you, you but, convinced me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I think we all, anybody our age, like I said, Lucas is about to be 36. I'm 37. We we grew up in the age of man. We we all the stars. You know, from the '80s, '90s, and 2000s, it was the perfect time. It's not what you watch now, where you're everybody looks the same and talks the same, and it's just boring as all hell. To be honest with you. But those were the glory days, and and British Bulldog was was one of the biggest stars of that era. So, so thank you to Georgia Smith for coming on chat, and she was a hell of an interview. Very good. All right, everybody, we appreciate you.